it guys this is the most comprehensive youtube guy on how to sell ai generated art on etsy i know there's a bunch of youtube videos about it this is the hardest topic right now so everyone is making a youtube video about it but i am actually someone that has been doing this for the past couple of months i actually share my results on youtube you guys can check it out and see i showed you the realistic results not something that's you know out of touch and you know making million dollars a month or something like that i showed you realistic results matter of fact let me show you the realistic results on one of my stores right now so this is one of my stores it's early in the morning right now but so far we got three orders and we made 19 dollars. okay if you want to see how much i made in the last couple of months let me actually share this with you so if i go to my stats you can see that uh, I generated $972 in revenue. We got 273 orders and this is just sales, but let's actually go the profit. So I'm going to show you the profits. If I go to finances, go to payment account, it's going to show me all the actual profit. So the actual profit is $358. That's how much I made. These are realistic results. It can be bigger. And this is actually one of the smaller Etsy stores I have. This is the one I decided to document on YouTube. So these are the numbers you can expect. This account only has 25 listings. And in today, I'm going to show you how to build a store like this yourself. So we went over the results. You can see what you can expect. But some of you guys might not be familiar with Etsy AR art selling at all. You might be asking, what the hell is that? Okay. And we're going to go over this really fast because I Want to explain briefly what it is so you are probably familiar with this ai revolution you probably heard about chat gpt at this point which is like a text-based ai that can do a lot of stuff right you can write essays if you're in college or catchy dms for your tinder dates okay so chat gpt is the most popular ai but there is a second one called mid journey and mid journey is text to image ai which basically means you type in what do you want to see and the ai will generate an image for you and mid journey is capable of doing some amazing pictures what i've been been doing i've been using mid journey to generate ai images that are really really cool and then i would sell them on etsy and etsy is a marketplace such as ebay such as amazon but what is cool about etsy is that they allow crafty and unique products and you might be asking how's crafty and unique related to images well there's also one more cool thing about etsy they allow to sell digital products and what is a digital product basically anything that you create on your computer and it doesn't exist in real life it can be a PDF, it can be Excel spreadsheet or an image. So I create images mid journey and then I sell them in the bundles of let's say 20 images on Etsy for a couple of dollars and people buy from me. And a lot of people are asking why would anyone buy images from you? Well, the main reason why people buy images on Etsy is because they use it for their business. Maybe they are doing some print on demand stuff and they have no time to come up with the design. So it's easier for them to buy something from someone like me than to research it or create it themselves. And later on, very often these people just resell whatever they purchase from you on Etsy but in the physical product so let's say I create a design of a funny cat and someone purchased the design of the funny cat from me to print it out on a t-shirt that they later on sell on Etsy it's like an inception like the movie so now you know what it is what about pros and cons the pros are that this can be very passive and when I say passive I mean that there's very little maintenance of these type of Etsy stores okay all you have to do is just create something in mid journey which can take you anything from like a couple of minutes to an hour and then upload it to Etsy and just wait for sales and once you do that you don't have to do much you don't have to fulfill orders you don't have to upload tracking numbers you barely do anything everything is automized and the only thing you really have to do is just some customer service some people might message you about how to download an image or they might just ask a question but that's about it another pro is that there is a little upfront the only money that you're gonna spend is on mid journey which starts with ten dollars a month and if you want to be like me you can also purchase a photoshop license for 25 dollars a month but more about it later in the video there are also free alternatives which i'm gonna talk about so don't worry about that but yeah the cost is really cheap to start compare this to like amazon fba for example where you have to spend a couple of thousand of dollars or even drop shipping on facebook or ebay where you have to have some sort of money in order to start and fulfill the first orders and there's not many cons to be honest with you i think the biggest one is that it might take some time to create a listing so this whole thing can be a little bit time consuming it doesn't take as much time as created an art from the beginning and the scratch real artist spends way more time on this but if you want to do this on a scale that is profitable this process can be time consuming also you might not be able to make any money in the beginning because you're probably gonna spend money on ads which is what i recommend in order to get the first sales first views for the first week you might not see any results whatsoever you might actually be losing money but the good thing is that it's not gonna be a lot you might be losing like couple of dollars a day to establish your store and then it's just gonna skyrocket and it's basically printing money machine okay so let's get started 
Down below under this video, you're going to see timestamps if you want to go to the specific section of this video. I believe this video is going to be lengthy, so you might want to come back to it and watch it later if you don't have time to finish the whole thing. And let's start how to get Mid Journey, which is the AI tool that we're going to use to create AI art. So first go to the midjourney.com, which is this website that you can see on my screen. You're going to have links for all the websites, all the tools down below under this video. So make sure to check them out. Anything I mention is down there. But to use Mid Journey, you're going to need Discord first. So you're actually going to hit the discord.com first, which is this website right here. And you will have to create a Discord account. If you don't know what Discord is, Discord is this social media platform that people use to communicate. And I actually have my own Discord service that you can join if you sign up to my YouTube membership. It's a private community. If you want to join, feel free to do it. There are other perks such as monthly AI prompts that I share with my community too. So check it out. So create the Discord account. Once you have the Discord account, Go back to mid journey and now let me show you how to get it. So first you're going to go here and click on join the beta. And if you're not logged in to, to your discord on your browser, you're going to click on continue to discord and you have to log into your discord account. Next, you're going to get this message to connect your discord with mid journey. So just click on authorize. And once you do all of that, you're going to get access to the mid journey server. Okay. And this can be a little bit overwhelming because there's a lot of stuff happening, but all you have to do, okay, is scroll down to any of those newbie sections, let's say this one, for example, okay, and type in slash subscribe and click OK. And my journey is going to give you this message right here. Make sure to uh, to keep it uh, on top because there's a lot of people texting right in this chat and they're sending messages. So make sure to scroll down or up depends on your situation until you see this button which says open subscription page and click on go visit site. And don't worry, nobody can see this message. The only messages people can see are the outputs such as this one, but no one's going to see this part, which is, which is the subscription. So in order to start using mid journey, you need to buy their, uh, their basic plan at least which is the $10 a month. The main reason why you want to do this is because it's going to give you the general commercial license, which means you can resell the AI images that mid journey is going to generate. So you want to at least that one. And also your mid journey is going to be faster. So your image is going to be made faster. Once you're ready to upgrade, you can upgrade to a higher levels such as the standard or pro plan. Basically what that means is just let you get more credits and you can, you can generate images even faster than the standard or sorry, basic plan. This is actually the one I have right now, the $30 ones. Once you've got the subscription, go back to the mid journey server, just click again on those newbie servers and just try to find the mid journey bot like this one right here, where it says mid journey bot, click on it. And then just what it says message, just type in anything. Okay. Uh, just type in hello, for example, and what that's going to do is it's going to open a private uh, text channel between you and mid journey. What we were trying to do is we're trying to don't get confused with all these images that are happening on mid journey server, because if they, if you go on their server, you're going to see just a bunch of people tapping messages and it's really hard to kind of find yours. Okay. Cause this is what other people are doing. This is not what we are trying to do. This is other people. If you open the private channel, it's just easy to kind of maneuver and find the stuff that you want to do. Okay. All right. So this is mid journey 101. Okay. I'm going to show you the basics tools that I use. And listen, there might be more advanced guides on mid journey and it's great, but I'm just going to show you the way I use it. And it's really not that advanced to be honest with you, but let me break it down. Okay. So first thing first, if you type in slash settings, okay, like this, you're going to get a couple of options. So when you type it in, you're going to see all of this. Okay. This is actually very important because I'm going to tell you what I do and I suggest you do the same. But what do you want to do is for the AIR that we are trying to generate, you want to change the mid journey to mid journey version four. Okay. Don't use five. Five is good for like realistic results, like realistic people. Four is better for Etsy stuff that we're going to do. Okay. So keep it at four. What is this quality? I usually have it at high quality. What is the style? Uh, it depends. Sometimes I have it at the style very high. Sometimes I have it with the style med. Basically, the higher the style, the more details it's going to be. Sometimes that works really great. Sometimes it doesn't. It, it kind of depends. Let's say we're going to do a style very high for the sake of our examples. And let's see if this actually going to work. Okay. Also, if you have the premium subscription, you can go to public mode or stealth mode 
which means that if you're in the stealth mode, nobody can see your designs on your profile, but that requires you to have the most expensive subscription basically. And then you have the modes, you have the remix mode, fast mode and relax mode. So since you have a subscription, you can use the fast mode, which basically means that your image is going to be generated faster. Now, how do you actually create something? How do you actually create an image? So you tap in slash and imagine. Okay. And that's how you create the images and you create images in something called prompt. So prompt is the, the command basically that you give to AI. So for example, I want a black head, um, dancing in red shoes with white background. Midjourney is going to start its job and it's going to start generating some AI images. It's going to always give you four examples. Okay. And we're going to go over these four examples so you can understand why they do it. But the main reason why is because they want to show you four different variations, because maybe there's one variation that you actually like. And this is actually not what I was looking for, but I see I made a mistake because I type in black hat, but I, what I meant is black cat. Did I say that right? Did I say hat or cat? Let me know in the comments because I'm actually not sure, but I meant the cat. But anyway, so these are the four uh, variations that Midjourney gave it to me, okay? It's a black hat and it's dancing in red shoes. Well, some of them are red. This, this one is red, this one is red. It has a white background. So as you can see, this is okay, but it's not perfect. Basically, the better your prompting is, the better details you give it to the Midjourney, you're probably gonna get better results. But for the sake of our uh, example, okay? Let's say uh, I like this design, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uh, upscale this image so it's actually big and it's just one singular image instead of having four of them I'm gonna have one because right now if I download this image I'm gonna have these four variations I don't want it let's say I just want to pick the one okay so you have these buttons right here it says u1 u2 u3 u4 and then v1 v2 v3 v4 so what that means is that u stands for upscale v stands for uh, variation and one, two, three, four, basically these are the numbers of the images. So this is number one, this is two, this is three and four. It's always like that. It's always that order. Okay. So uh, it, I want the single one. So I'm going to click on U1 and now it's going to upscale this image. Okay. But if I will click on V1, for example, it will create more variations of ver uh, version number one. So I will get more variations of this one with slightly different uh, you know, objects. And let's actually see what Midjourney is going to do. I'm actually creating two. So I'm actually creating variations, which you can see right now. And I'm actually ups upscaling the image, but it's kind of slow right now. So it's going to take a minute. But here, here are the variations of number one. Okay. So there are some small differences. Like you can see, he, this one is missing a hand. This one is missing a hand. This one, <laughs> this guy, this girl, I don't know who that is, a person, um, hand is like blurry. So Again, it's, it's not perfect, okay? But I'm going to show you how to make it kind of perfect, okay? And here's our upscale version of that. So that's the version of number one from the original. Okay, so if I like it, I can save it. I can right click. Actually, no, don't do that. Click on, uh, just click on an image, click on open in browser, and then it's going to open it up in a separate tab and then save it as an image on your computer. That way it's just a better quality and it's bigger. Okay. That's usually how I do it. So now you understand the basics. Let's talk about strategy. So the strategy I use is I basically go on Etsy and I type in, let's say digital prints or clip art or something like that. Okay. To basically see the designs that people are already selling. Once I find something that I see have data that shows that, you know, this type of images are getting sales in the last 30 days, that means to me that something is selling. I'm not trying to be creative and create designs I like because whatever I like might not actually be something that people on the internet likes and will purchase them, okay? I look for stuff that are already selling and then I try to create something similar. Not exactly the same, but similar. For example, let's say I find an image of a black cat, okay? Wearing a pink shirt and that image has a lot of sales on Etsy. I'm gonna try to create maybe a variation of it. Let's say a white cat wearing a pink shirt or maybe a black cat wearing an orange shirt okay something like that basically something similar enough to the original but different enough so i won't get in trouble if something is already selling that means that if i create something similar it's probably gonna sell as well all right so once i figure out what i want to sell i go back to mid journey and just start typing in the prompt i just try to use the keywords from the title of my competitor modify a little bit and then 
try to create something, okay? Once I create that, I'll try to create 20 different variations of it. Usually it's 20, it depends on the niche and the market, but let's say it's 20 images of the same cat, okay? And the reason being why I'm trying to create 20 variations of it is because I sell images in bundles. If I sell singular image, I have a low success of getting sales. But if someone can buy 20 images of, you know, these cats in the shirts or whatever, for like, let's say four bucks, that sounds to them like a good deal. And that's also gonna increase my conversion rate. And here Here's where it gets better, okay? So let's say I created my first bundle, first bundle of 20 cats in shirts. Now I'm gonna create another bundle of 20 cats in different shirts and I'm gonna sell it for four bucks. So I already have two listings that sell for four bucks, okay? Of very similar item. Then I'm gonna create another bundle very similar to the other two. And then I'm gonna create a fourth bundle. So I already have what? I have uh, four bundles selling for four bucks of different cats wearing, uh, you know, shirts, whatever. And then I combine these four bundles into one mega bundle. So we got 80 images, four times four is 16. So maybe I'll run them on a discount, let's say for 14 or 15 bucks. That way, whenever I sell that mega bundle, I make more money, but I didn't really create a new listing. I just used the already existing listings that I created earlier and just put them together and sell them as a separate bundle. And that's my strategy. It's just making small bundles and then putting together the small bundles of similar stuff. It has to be similar, you know, theme. In our case, it's cats and shirts and create these mega bundles that you can resell. And then you can create but mega bundles of mega bundles. So let's say, you know, one mega bundle contains all your designs of cats and another one is gonna contain all your images of rabbits or something like that. And you can combine these mega bundles together and sell it for like, I don't know, 30 bucks or something. And people are doing this on Etsy and that's the strategy I'm using and I recommend you do the same. Also, here's the secret hack that you can do, okay? If you open a new Etsy account and has zero reviews, zero sales, you know, and you're concerned that, you know, people might you know not buy from you this is what you're gonna do okay just list your items for one dollar it doesn't matter you know list them for one dollar for a couple of days and then increase the price to the price you actually want to sell it for after you get your initial sales you're not really losing anything you just created something virtual that doesn't exist in real life you don't have to ship anything so you can always change the price after you get your first sales first reviews and that's how you get your initial get started because a lot of people are complaining when they start this that they're not getting any sales because they don't have reviews blah 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 well just sell it for almost a free okay if you sell something for a dollar no one's gonna complain and no one's gonna be you know as scary because you have zero reviews or whatever which i don't even think people care that much list your items for a dollar if you're scared that you're gonna get sales and then increase the price once you get your first review or first two reviews or something let's get to the very important part of this video which is the product research in this section we're gonna go over how to find products that you can sell on etsy so what i do i always look up for items that are already selling okay i'm not trying to be creative i'm not trying to you know reinvent the wheel i look for data that will show me that something is selling already okay and the tool i use to show me that data is called everbee and this is actually something that i forgot to mention earlier when i was talking about the things you're gonna need you are probably gonna want to invest into everbee because this is an essential tool for product research i use it all the time they have a free trial if you want to test it out i believe you're gonna get a couple of credits that you can use for free use i feel like it's 20 30 searches a month or something like that. So you can try it out if you like it, keep it. I use it all the time. Everbee is an amazing tool. So let's get to the actual method. So right now I'm on Etsy.com, right? And as you can see right here on the left, I have this bar that says Everbee. This is the research tool that I was talking about. It can do a lot of useful stuff and I recommend that you get it as well. Use the link down below in the description, sign up. Once you sign up, log in and you will have to download the Chrome extension. And once you install the Chrome extension or browser, you're gonna get this bar right here on the left, which will allow you to do a bunch of different product research, okay? Okay, once you have Everbee, this is what I usually do, okay? There are usually two keywords that I usually start with my product research. One is clip art and the other one is digital prints. The reason being why I start with these two words is because these are the keywords that people that are looking for digital uh, prints, you know, digital products that they wanna buy. They, they looking for them as well. And eventually you're gonna get to the point that you're just gonna get recommended stuff like this one, for example. This is something that I could probably generate myself. Etsy is just suggesting to me that, you know, uh, based on my recent search history, what type of products are similar to the ones I was looking for, okay? But let's start with the, the first one, which is the digital prints, okay? So I'm gonna type in digital prints, okay? And right here I can see uh, some uh, digital prints, right? What I'm looking for is I'm looking for one that like catches my attention 
and I'm gonna check if the data can show that I can uh, sell this, okay? And also what I'm looking for is that something that I can replicate because there are some designs that I probably cannot replicate in mid journey, or maybe I just don't know how. Some of them are easy to do and that's what we're gonna do. So for example, let's click on this one right here, okay? So this thing costs $3. Nine people have it in a cart, which is a good sign, okay? The store is brand new. It only has 17 sales, so it's a brand new store. But let's see if this listing, this uh, this pattern is actually selling. So as you can see, people are using for like the t-shirts, sorry, for dresses, pillows, uh, sheets, stuff like that. So that's why people are buying these, these designs, okay? So I'm gonna click on Everbee, I'm gonna click on product analytics and watch what happens, okay? The Everbee is gonna give me the data on this uh, listing. So I can see that this listing is only, it's less than a month old, which is a brand new listing. It got 17 favorites and 276 uh, views, but no sales, at least we don't see any sales. Usually what I, I'm looking for is the sales. I want something that's already selling, but since Etsy is telling me that this listing got nine uh, add to cards, and also um, 17 favorites, that means that people are, aren't, are interested in this, uh, in this listing. Maybe it's just that this is you know brand new account and they might be hesitating, but it's a good indicator. This, this is a good indicator. Again, this looks like a brand new store that was just open. And as you can see, they are selling a lot of patterns. So maybe let's see if they actually have a different product, okay, that it's already selling. And we can easily do this by again, opening the stores, I need to be on the store um, URL right now and then go to Everbee, click on product analytics and Everbee is going to do a whole breakdown of what this store is selling. OK, so as you can see, everything is less than a month old. So everything is brand new. Uh, but let's see if anything has sold recently. OK, and then right now I don't see any sales and it seems like nothing has sold, but that's probably because Everbee it didn't catch up all the data. Everbee is a little bit delayed, it doesn't give you the most accurate data, but it gives you very close to, to it, okay? I think the store was just open. I only see 17 sales. So I, I, I imagine that this is a brand new store, but here's another way that you can track if there are any sales, just click on sales. Not every store on Etsy will show you that because you can hide it, but some of them will. So click on the sales and as you can see, I can see the most recent sales. So this store is actually selling and these are the patterns I can see that are selling. So this one is very popular. It seems like because we have one, two, three, four, we got four sales. Okay, that's good. The B one is popular. We got two Bs. Um, let's see if there's anything uh, that's being repeated. Not, not really. Okay, so I could probably try to sell, the, I could probably try to recreate any of those. But since this is like the best selling one, I would probably try to recreate this pattern, okay? So I already have one potential candidate for something that I'll try to create in mid-journey inside myself. Now let's change the tactic a little bit, okay? Let's go with the clip art. So we tried digital print. Now let's try to go with clip art, okay? So I'm gonna type in clip art and let's see what we have. And so in clip art, we're gonna have a lot of different listings. If you see something like this that says Disney, stay away from it, okay? You don't want to list Disney products. You're going to get banned. You're going to get restricted. You're going to be in trouble. Avoid people like that, okay? You don't want to sell Disney stuff. Even though they sell like crazy, you want to avoid it, okay? This store, I always use it in all my videos as an example, so I'm not going to use it now because I don't want to use the same store all the time. But let's see if there are different stores that are doing well, okay? This one looks interesting. We might want to check, check out this one. But... Here's the thing, uh, if you want to just give Everbee the list of the best selling stores, again, just go here, click on product analytics and Everbee is going to run the breakdown of the URL. So it's going to show me which listings are selling the best. So I'm going to rank this by monthly sales because that's what interests me. And watercolor sunflowers are selling like crazy. They're only one month old, so brand new listings and they uh, generated $700 in sales in the last month and 214 sales uh, and they sell for three bucks. So that's that's a really good indicator that this is a hot product. So let's check it out. I'm going to click on it and let's see what this listing looks like. OK, so just bunch of sunflowers. OK, they look nice. Everything looks great here. So this is something that we can for sure replicate in mid journey. Uh, it shouldn't be that hard to make. And maybe let's actually use this as an example. OK, so 
what I'm gonna do now is I will try to create something similar to it, okay? I'm not gonna copy exactly one by one, but I'm gonna try to recreate something similar and it's gonna be our first listing, okay? Here's a bonus tip when you do product research, okay? Try to look for listings that are seasonal. As you can see, I found these sunflowers, right? Sunflowers are, uh, you know, the theme behind them is basically spring, summer, you know, hot weather. That's the theme of the sunflowers. And that's accurate because right now I'm recording this uh, at the end of the May, the beginning of the May. Sorry, it's the, it's, it's the end of the April, the beginning of the May. So people are getting into spring, summer uh, mood. Okay, people go, go outside. So this is a perfect example of a seasonal product. As you can see it's the number one selling clip art on Etsy. So that's a that's the power of seasonality. I keep saying that seasonal products are amazing and you should always try to look for seasonal products because they do very well. You know, I, I said earlier that I was selling Easter related uh, digital art with like Easter bunnies, Easter eggs and stuff like that. And I did get a lot of sales in March and April. And the same rule applies here to these sunflowers. They're selling like crazy because there's a demand for it, okay? So that's a bonus tip. Try to also look for seasonal products because they do very well. So we got our inspiration. We know what sells already. Now let's get to the prompting, which is probably the most challenging part of this whole process, okay? Prompting is basically the process of giving the command to AI in order to create the, the image that we're looking for, okay? The reason being why I say it's the most difficult part is because it might take some time to figure out the actual prompt that will give us the results we're looking for, okay? And here's the thing, and I'm probably gonna get some critique for it, but I don't care. The way I prompt is very manual, okay? If you watch YouTube videos, you're gonna see a bunch of people recommending an integration with ChatGPT and MidJourney or some websites that can kind of figure out what you're presenting and then create the prompt for you for MidJourney. I try those, I didn't have much luck. I don't know, I prefer just stick to the very manual way because that's what's been working for me and that's what I do. If you figure out a better way, that's good. I'm happy for you. Feel free to tell me your way but honestly, all these integrations and stuff like that, fancy stuff, they don't really work for me. I, I stick to the very <laughs> kind of primitive method, but the one that I find the most success with, okay? So the sunflower, right? That's what we're trying to recreate. So this is what we're gonna do. Usually you have a lot of keywords in the title that you can use for the prompt. So for example, watercolor sunflower clip art. That's that's exactly what this is. This is describing this image, okay? Watercolor is the style of this. Sunflowers, it's what's being visible on the on the image. And then clip art, it's also another like uh, style of the image we're looking for. It also tells you fall sunflower flora bouquets. Maybe we can use the wording such as sunflower flora bouquet because some of them are bouquets. So we can use that word as well. Uh, and the rest is not really important, such as PNG form and instant download. That's just, that's, those are the keywords for Etsy, not necessarily for our prompt. So that's my method. I try to see what I'm looking at. What are the keywords in the title? Because usually the title has the keywords that describe the product. And if there's not enough keywords in the title, I just add my own keywords that I can kind of see based on the image that I'm looking for, okay? If you're confused, let me just show you what I'm talking about. So I'm in the mid journey and I'm going to just make sure that my settings are set up for mid journey four instead of five. I told you that earlier that I find mid journey four to work better than five for like clip art like this. For some reason, mid journey five is just too realistic and it doesn't just give the same results. Okay. So now I'm going to type in slash imagine, right? I'm ready to create the prompt and let's just get the keywords from here. So watercolor, sunflower, clip art, that's for sure something that we are looking for. So I'm going to copy that and paste it right here. Uh, let's do a space. Sunflower, flora, bouquets. I'm going to copy that as well, but I'm going to do this as a separate uh, image. So basically I'm each uh, image is gonna be a separate bouquet. I'm not gonna put them all together in one. I'm gonna make them uh, like singular. I'm gonna remove any wording that uh, indicates multiple items. So I'm gonna delete the S from here. So it's gonna be uh, clip art, um, sunflower, flora, bouquet, watercolor, 
sunflower instead of sunflowers that way i'm just going to get one not multiple um what else can we can we can we do i think this is the good start but i'm also add i'm going to add a couple of different words okay so i'm going to add white background okay because i want it to be on the white background and i think that's it let's actually see what happens okay let's see what type of image i'm gonna get from mid journey and that's the thing with this process uh, it's the most time consuming and it's kind of the the hardest part of this but like once you figure out your prompt you you can just recreate it and create different variations okay so right now we will try to create 20 variations of these sunflowers okay and the reason being why i said it might uh, take some time is because you know mid journey might not create um, the image you're looking for first here's the first results we got it's okay but it's not exactly what we're looking for okay so a couple of things first thing first these images have text we don't want any text so we need to make sure that there's no text i'm going to show you how to do it in a second i like this one this could work uh but the rest uh there's text i could possibly remove text but i also noticed that this person is having the sunflowers in a jar. So maybe I'm gonna add the word that sunflower bouquet in a jar to make it look kind of like this. Uh, so let's, um, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep the number three. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep this one. So I'm gonna save the number three because I really like it. So that's our first image, okay? We're gonna look for 20. That's gonna be our first one. And let's actually remade the prompt that we used earlier. So I'm gonna copy this, type in imagine again. And we're going to change it a little bit. So watercolor, sunflower, clip art, sunflower, flora bouquet in the jar, white background. And I'm going to do comma, no text because I don't want any, any, any captions, any text. Okay. In the meantime, Medjoni is working on the sunflower number three that we picked from here, which is great. But I'm also going to run another prompt that's going to run in this, at the same time and let's see what happens okay so this is the number three that i used before it looks pretty good so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna download it on my computer but before i do that i'm gonna create the folder that i'm gonna save these images at okay so i just created a folder called sunflowers on my computer this is where i'm gonna save all my sunflower uh, images what i'm also gonna do is i'm gonna, gonna create a new folder called final and you're gonna see what we're gonna do this later. For now, this folder is gonna be empty, but let's go back to uh, the image. So I'm gonna click save image as, select the folder sunflowers. I'm gonna name it number one. So I know that this is the first one and just click save. And voila, I just have the first one. Now let's create 19 more. Okay, let's see what happens with our new design. Okay, this looks kinda good, I mean, Number two and number three looks good, but here again, we have the text. Even though I type in no text, we still receive text. Um, maybe I'll try no caption, okay? But this looks good. I'm gonna upscale number two and number three because I think they are relatively good. So let's, gonna, let's, uh, let's click on number two and number three. And maybe, uh, maybe we can ask for variations. Let's say I want a variation of number uh, two. So that way we can kind of say, some time on creating new uh, designs so i'm going to click on variation number two and as you can see i have three uh orders uh running at the same time on mid journey that way i can speed up my process i think the, the limit is three at the, uh, at the time so let mid journey work we're going to come back once this is ready and we're going to save our uh, templates all right so these are the results so we got another upscale image here's another one and here are variations of uh, number two they kind of look all the same to be honest so maybe i'm just gonna use maybe like this one and maybe this one because i don't want to give too many variations of the same thing you know so let's just say i just want number three and number four and i'm gonna download these two that i already have saved up okay so i'm gonna click on open a new browser uh, right click save image as number two and then let's go back to our previous one, click on it, open new browser, uh, save image as number three. So we already have three, there's uh, two more in the work. So that's the kind of the process. So you're just trying to create these, right? I'm, I'm trying to get 20 of them, but I want to give them variety of different ones. Don't just, you know, um, give them the 20 versions of the same one. People are not going to like it. So uh, that's why I only picked a few, but 
Okay, so we got a couple of them. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, copy the the, uh, the prompt again, type in imagine again, control V. I'm going to remove, uh, change it to no caption. And let's see, maybe, maybe I'm going to get different variations. Okay, so that's the process. Okay, the process is like slightly changing the prompt. See if you see some, if you like something, if you do upscale it, if you upscale it, save it in the folder. And that's the process. As, as long as you get 20 of those, you're good. So you're trying to get 20 different variations of, you know, uh, similar theme objects. And yeah, that's the whole process. All right. So we got new variations. Honestly, they, like they look great. Like number one, number three and number four, they look great, but they have text again. That's the problem. But that's fine because we're going to use this as a learning lesson. What to do if you get a good looking image, but there's just like one thing that you don't like and you just want to change. So in our case, let's try this out on this image right here. Okay. We're going to do something to it. Uh, we're going to just remove this text, which you can easily do with any like editing software. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to upscale number one because I kind of like it. And uh, it's just, it's just the only thing that I don't like is that little, you know, weird text that we have right here on the top. So that's also the process that you can do if you find a design you like, but there's only one slight thing that you can easily fix. Like we can easily remove this. We're going to do this really quick in some software. All right, we got our image. I'm going to open it in your browser. We're going to save it in the folder and I'm going to click on six. Boom. Now I'm going to open that folder. So that's the folder, right? And uh, let's just look at the image. This number six is this one. So here's what I do. Okay. I, I would open this up and edit it in Photoshop. The Photoshop is a tool I use. I know it's a paid software, but I just use it for very different reasons. Photoshop is great. And we're going to also use Photoshop for upscaling. If you want to use alternatives, you can kind of do it in paint. I mean, honestly, you can just open it up in paint and remove this and you know I'm, I'm gonna show you right now how to do it you, you would just select this area click on delete and you're done but the problem if you do that is this you can only save this image as a as a jpeg and jpeg is gonna it's just less desirable people want the pngs okay so that's the problem with that method but it's it's possible it's it's still doable it's just jpeg's gonna be less desirable okay in photoshop you have a little bit more options and we're gonna do i'm gonna edit this in photoshop but you can also use canva you can also use gimp and there's another software uh alternative to photoshop photo p so if you type in photo you're gonna be taken to this website it's literally like a copy of photoshop it's free it's in the browser and you can operate on it as well but I'm going to do it in Photoshop just because I'm used to and that's what I prefer. So I'm going to open this up. All right. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just remove this really quick. And that's very easy. You're just going to click on the select button in Photoshop, select the area you want to get removed, click on delete. This is a cool thing that Photoshop has. It can uh, ask you if you want to delete it as a content aware removal, which basically means that Fo Photoshop has AI too and the AI will figure out what type of background is behind it. And in our case, it's white. So it's probably going to be white background. Let's double check it. Uh, yeah, it's <laughs> it's almost perfect. As you can see, it kept this little thing because it thinks that the flying leaves is a part of it. So I'm just going to click on it again and click on uh, remove. And as you can see, it's all white. But there's another text right here. And this content aware thing is going to be very useful to remove it here. So I'm going to select the area I want to remove, right? I'm going to click on delete. And watch what happens. I'm going to click on OK and Photoshop figure out that like there's this like, you know, watercolor background and then match it it and then remove and very easily remove the whole thing. So that's why another plus why Photoshop is a powerful tool because it can do tricks like that. And yeah, I, I love Photoshop. I'm not sure if you can do this in like photo P, for example, but you can definitely do this type of stuff in Photoshop. Okay, so let's assume that I've done all my 20 images. My bundle is ready. What's the next step? Well, the next one is something that a lot of people are asking for, but I personally don't do it. I skip this step just because it takes a lot of time and very often doesn't work the way I want it. And that step is a transparent background. When you create the images in mid journey, they don't have a transparent background, which means the object is not transparent and it's less desirable. Transparent images usually are more in demand. 
Okay, that's understandable. That's why you would want to do that. But the problem is like when you create these images and let's say you have 20 of them, right? If you use tools to remove that background, uh, let's say out of these 20 images, 10 will uh, work great. Like the background will be removed very easy and, 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 and in, you know, in no time, but then the other 10 will be messy and you kind of have to do it manually and it just takes a lot of time and it's it's just, I don't know. It's not worth spending so much time on fixing it, okay? In my opinion, because I tried doing the transparent background, but I gave up because the images that I sell without transparent background are selling well too. So if I can just cut some time on, you know, working on this uh, process, that's better for me. As long as there are people buying my stuff, I'm happy. People are buying images without transparent background. It's great. But if you do want to have listings with transparent background, I'm going to show you how you can do this. There are a couple of ways. Again, I'm going to use Photoshop just because I am, <laughs> I'm a Photoshop boy. Okay. I love Photoshop, but you can do this in Canva. Uh, Canva is a free tool that you can use. Uh, you can do this in GIMP. You can do this in Photo C. All these tools will allow you to remove background. But again, we're going to use Photoshop. So let me show you how to remove background. All right, so what you want to do is you want to click on uh, this button and unlock your uh, layer. Okay. Once you unlock the layer, you want to make sure that you want to be in the properties tab right here. If you don't have that tab, click on the window and then scroll down until you see properties, click on it and it will show up right here. Okay. And once you do all of that, you're going to have this button that says uh, remove background. Okay. So all you need to do is just click on it and the Photoshop AI will automatically remove the background. And voila, here you go. This is, this is, this is the way, as the Mandalorian would say. So the background is removed, but as you can see, it's not perfect. And that's what I'm saying. If you want to remove backgrounds, it's a little bit more work because usually these AI, they don't, they don't do like the perfect job. They do a good job, but then a perfect job. So if you want to remove like these white spots right here, what you can do is you can use the quick tool uh, button, this one here, and uh, that way you can click on the white background and just remove it like this. And as you can see, this adds up more time to your work in order to remove all these uh, white spots. Okay. So, if you want to do white background, go for it. This is, this is how you do it. But if you're like me and you just want to skip that step, that's fine. Again, I'm telling you, people will still buy it. Even if there is white background, they can always remove the background themselves. So don't really worry about it, but this is the way. So once you have the 20 images, once you fix them, remove the white background if you want to, or you skip that step because you are me and I don't remove the background. I don't bother with that. There's one more thing that you need to do to your images. You need to upscale them. Okay. So here's the thing. A lot of print on demand people that will buy these digital products from you. They have certain expectations. Okay. So they're going to expect that your images are upscaled to at least 300 DPI. Okay. DPI is basically the resolution of your images. And that's just kind of the expectations because when they use these images and they upload it to their software or their the device that they use to, you know, print these images out in real life, the expectation is that they, these images need to be at least 300 DPI. That's the resolution that it's needed. That's like the industry standard and you just have to do it. And there's a couple of ways uh, of doing it. Okay. Uh, you can, for example, use websites that will do it for you. I don't recommend that route because these websites usually charge you per image and, and the cost can add up. Some of them have subscription. You can go with that, but there are three alternatives. Okay. You can use GIMP in GIMP. You can do it for free. You can upscale images also in the photo C as well, which is another free alternative. Or again, if you're like me, you can do this in Photoshop and then Photoshop has a really cool thing about this. Basically you can do it in bulk. You can upscale, let's say 20 images at once. And I'm going to show you how to do that. This is the folder with the images. I know I only have six. But let's assume I have 20. Okay. Let's say I created my bundle of 20 images. And remember, this is the, the folder, right? The sunflowers. And I also have a subfolder called final. So the way this is going to work is that this is my, uh, let's say draft folder with all the drafts that we just created. And in the final, we're going to put the images that are done, that are upscale, ready to be uploaded. Okay. 
So that's why I have it set up that way. So uh, it's just easier for me and the Photoshop to kind of organize everything. So I'm going to open one of those in Photoshop. Let's start with the number one. And what I'm going to do now is first, I'm going to show you how to upscale it like individual images. So, you know, the steps, if you want to upscale just like one image instead of the bulk upscale. So all you have to do is click on image and click on image size. And then right here where it says resolution, you would change it to 300. Okay. I actually would recommend changing it to 400. The reason being why you want to do it to a slightly higher DPI is because I've noticed that when you upload these images to like Printify or Printful or something like that, even though they are 300, sometimes it's not actually 300. So I, I always try to go a little bit above like 400, 450, something like that to make sure that, um, you know, there's this little bit of margin of, of error, I guess, that will upscale the images. So you just click OK and uh, image is being upscaled. Here we go. So image is being upscaled. And now I would just save it. Uh, sorry, I would export it as the PNG file so I can keep the white background and transparency if there is any. In my case, there is no transparency, but hey, PNGs are just more desirable than JPEGs. It might take a little bit of time for Photoshop to get ready. I will click on export and I would save it in the final four folder. Okay, click save and voila, you're done. You just did one of those. But I'm going to show you how to do this step in bulk. Okay, so you don't have to just go one by one, but you can upscale all the images at once. So what you want to do is you want to go to the tab that says action. I have my app action tab right here. Again, if you don't have the action tab, what you can do is just you can click on the window button and then click on action and it will show up right here. And once you are in the action tab, you want to click on this button, this plus button. And what that plus button is going to do is going to create a new action. OK, that's what we're trying to do right now. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to name my action upscaling. OK, and click on record. OK, so once I click on record this 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 icon right here, means that right now everything I do in Photoshop is being recorded. The Photoshop is learning the patterns and the clicks I'm doing. And that way it, it will re record the task and that task can be replicated on other images. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to teach Photoshop what I'm doing with this image so we can use the same method on all of the images in the folder. OK, so again, we're going to go to image, image size. We're going to change it to 400, just like it says right here. Click OK. And voila, my image has been upgraded. OK, and I can see this task has been recorded right here. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to click on File and then click on Save. So the progress is going to be saved. And that's it. So once you're done with that, you're going to click right here on the button that says Stop Recording. OK. And now I'm going to show you how to apply um, the action that we just created on our other images. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on File and then you're going to click on Automate and Batch. And right here on the left, you're going to select the Source folder, which in our case is going to be that Sunflower folder where I have the draft images. OK, and then we're going to select the uh, output folder where the final image is going to be saved, which is that final folder that we created in the, in the sunflower folder. OK, so I'm going to select it and we also need to select the action. So make sure that the action you're selecting is the one that we just created, which is upscaling. By the way, I think I, I misspell it, uh, but just ignore it. OK, my grammar is not perfect. <laughs> just just ignore my grammar mistakes. OK, but anyway, so yeah, once you do that, click on OK. And watch what happened. So now Photoshop is going to start running uh, the upscaling process in the background. So all you have to do is just wait. And here, here's the progress. You can track it. Photoshop is just going to open each image one by one and do it all these steps. So we have six images in, in my case, and you're going to see this happening six times. And I can actually track this happening in real life. So this is the, sub, the sunflower folder. But if I go to final, 
I can see that images are being created. So right now we have number one, but now I can see the second one popping up. So the second one is being uh, made right now. And that's the process. That's the beauty of Photoshop that allows you to automate a lot of these steps so you don't have to do it yourself. That's why I really like Photoshop. Congratulations, your images are done. Now let's get to selling, my friend, okay? So before we get to selling, there's one more step that we need to do is we need to upload these images on some sort of uh, cloud, okay? I just use Google Cloud, Google Drive, because it's free. You can upload up to 15 gigs of uh, files, which is a lot. And you can also just create another Google Drive if you wanna be a cheap bastard like me, or you can just subscribe and get like two terabytes for like $10 a month or something, which is a lot, two terabytes of you know, space in the cloud is a lot. And the main reason why you wanna use the cloud and upload these images to some sort of uh, cloud folder is because they're just too big. Uh, Etsy has a limit of 100 megabytes of files that you can upload, but usually these images, if you're gonna upload 20 of them and you upscale them and everything, they weigh way more than, you know, 100 megabytes. So that's why you wanna upload them into a drive. And once you have the drive, you're gonna get the link for that drive to that folder on the drive and um, you know, you're gonna share this uh, link with your customers when they purchase from you, okay? Don't worry, everything is gonna be automated. You don't really need to message your customers. You need to do a lot. I'm gonna show you how to automate this whole process. And when you do that, there's one more tip that I'm gonna give you. Don't use your main Google Drive. Like if you have a Google Drive that you store documents or stuff like that, your personal images, don't use that one. Just create a new one that, you know, um, it's not gonna be attached to your personal stuff. That way, if something happens, you're not going to lose your stuff. Just saying, okay? That's the tip I'm going to give you. All right, so this is one of my Google Drives that I use for my images. I'm going to click on right click and I'm going to click on a uh, new folder and I'm going to call it Sunflowers just because we created the Sunflowers. I'm going to click on Create. I'm going to double click it. So this is my folder, right? Now I'm going to open the one with my uh, images, uh, the final images that Photoshop has upscaled. So these are the images that are just ready to sell. And I'm gonna simply drag and drop them right here. That way they're gonna be uploaded to this Google Drive and that way I can sell them, okay? So right now Google is uploading my uh, images to their drive, but in the meantime, I'm gonna uh, create a folder, a document folder, that I'm gonna upload to Etsy with the link to this file. So whenever someone purchased from me on Etsy, they're gonna get uh, the document folder with the link to this folder with the images, okay? So let me show you what I mean. So I just started a new uh, Google document. I'm gonna call it Etsy instructions, okay? And I'm gonna say something like, hello, thank you for your purchase and find the link to your images down below, okay? And now I'm gonna go to the drive and I'm gonna, uh, the images are still being uploaded, but that's okay. Just let, let it finish, but in the meantime, we can work. I'm gonna click on uh, this, this icon right here. I'm gonna click on share, and here's very important. You're gonna change the general access from restricted to anyone with the link, and I'm gonna click on copy link, okay? Here's the thing. Remember that if you do that, this whole folder is gonna be accessible to anyone with the link, meaning if someone has the link, they can access the folder. This is why you only wanna give access to this folder to the people that purchase from you and to only that folder. You don't wanna share links to other folders because they didn't buy access to other folders. They only buy access to this folder. So make sure that you, uh, that you remember that but once you copy the link, go back to the uh, the, the Google uh, document, paste the link, right? And voila, now I have a document that I can upload to Etsy and whenever someone purchase from me, they're gonna get this document and with the link to this folder, okay? I know this sounds like an inception, but it's not that complicated. Okay, so I'm gonna save this document on my computer and we're gonna use this later on once we're gonna create the listing. So I'm gonna save it as a, PDF and we are done here. Okay, so let's get to the listing process, okay? There's a couple of steps that we need to do in order to create the listings. But the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna create our uh, listing images. So the images are very important because they're gonna create the first impression 
Impression or expression? Impression, right? The first impression to your customers, and that's a deciding factor because that's gonna, uh, you know, decide if they're gonna click on your listing and potentially buy it or not. So it's very important that you create, uh, you know, a good first impression for your listing. And um, usually what I do is whenever I create the listing images, I put a couple of designs into one image. That way it gives me two things, okay? First one, uh, I, the, my customer can see that this is the bundle. There's a bunch of different designs in it. And the second thing is that kind of protects me from someone else copying in the listing image because let's face it, someone can just simply right click on an image and save it and they have all the designs. But if they all are kind of mixed together, it makes them harder to do it. And that's what's protecting you from, you know, someone stealing your art for free. Even if they would steal it, they would need still to upscale it and it would it just it would not work anyway. But that's kind of the way to protect yourself from other people just right clicking and saving the images just like some people are doing this with NFTs. All right, so to create my listing image template, I'm just going to use a tool called Canva. Canva is free, you know, it's a, it's a tool that it works great. A free version is enough to do what we're going to do here. So I'm just going to create a new design Okay, and I'm gonna create a square design. Let me type in square and see if they have one. Uh, the reason being why I want square is because that's kind of what the billboard square, we can use that one, that should be fine. Okay, so uh, let's go with this one. And uh, I'm gonna go to uploads and I'm gonna upload my designs. So I have them saved up in my folder on my computer. And I got a message that my images are too big because they're upscale and they probably heavy a lot and that's okay because I also have the version of them that, that's not upscale, which is in my draft folder, not in my file and folder. So I can just use these instead and that should work. All right, so I got my images ready. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put them together, uh, but I'm gonna find this, um, this like grid tab that Canva has. Here we go, this is the one I'm looking for. So let's say uh, I want to use one that will allow me to divide this into four sections and upload these images, uh, like four, four images at once. So let's see if I can find the one I'm looking for. This is three, this is three. Where is the four one? Let's see, uh, there's one right here. Okay, let's, let's go with this one, for example. And now I'm gonna go back to uploads and just simply uh, drop these images like this. Okay, uh, let's have this one. Let's have this one. And maybe, which, which is the one that I haven't used that one. I, already, I think I already used this one. I didn't use this one yet. Okay, so this could be our first tab. Okay, I'm gonna create this little uh, squares right here because right now it's kind of look weird that the images are being cut off. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna take the line like that. Exactly, this is exactly what I'm looking for. Okay, one right here. Let's copy it and make another one like this. Uh, where is it? Here you go. Okay, that looks better. I think this is fine. Obviously do it whichever way you wanna do it. But I'm just giving an example of what you can do. So that's like one of the uh, one of the samples we can do, right? And let's make another one, okay? So another one, let's just do one single image like this one, for example, but we're gonna add the watermark so that way no one's gonna steal it from us. So this is how you add the watermark, okay? So I'm gonna click here and maybe um, uh, you're gonna create a text, maybe in a text say something like, maybe put the name of your Etsy store, okay? So let's say my Etsy store is um, Digital Flowers, okay? That's the name of my store. And I'm gonna do something like this, okay? And I'm gonna stretch it out like that. Okay, let's do this and let's do this. Okay, basically I wanna cover kind of the whole thing. It looks ugly right now, but this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna click on transparency and you're gonna uh, make it something like that. So that way you're protecting yourself from other people seeing this image. They can still see it, but they won't be able to steal it uh, because they're gonna have a hard time removing this digital flowers name, this watermark. So that's the safety tip, okay? 
And maybe let's do one more image, okay, our listing image. So maybe let's do one that's kind of like manual. So I'm just gonna kind of randomly put these images in uh, all over the place like this and like this, okay. And I think, I think this is fine. This could work. Okay, it shows the three different images. Um, you know, try to be uh, artistic, I guess. But for our example, I think this is fine. So I have three different types. I have this one, I have this one, and I have this one, okay? So now what you can do is you can download these images and that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna click on download and I'm gonna save them as a PNG, download on my computer, and we're gonna upload them to our Etsy account. But here's a bonus tip. You can turn this these images into a video and then can also give you extra exposure, okay? You can easily do this in Canva. If you click on animate and then you select one of these designs, let's say you wanna do pain or something, okay? Let's say that's the one I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna click on apply to all uh, animations. And now when I click on it, uh, I have a 15 second video, okay? And this can potentially help me you know, get more sales, more exposure, because Etsy promotes video a lot. So yeah, here you go. Super simple, M made in a couple of seconds, okay? So I'm gonna download this video as well, and I'm gonna upload to my Etsy listing too. So I just created three images and three videos for free in Canva in a matter of, I don't know, a couple of minutes. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how to actually list uh, your first digital product, okay? So go ahead and log into your Etsy dashboard and you're gonna click on listings right here and you're gonna click on add a listing. We're gonna create our first listing, right? So I'm gonna click here and let's go over this process. So title. Title is very important because title is where the SEO kicks in, okay? Title is the most important part of this whole process, okay? So what do you wanna do in a title? Is you wanna use the keywords that are working for this listing. So for sure, we wanna use a watercolor because that's the style we created, the sunflower watercolor, right? We wanna use the word PNG because these listings are PNG images. So we wanna make sure that this is the right category that are put in. But we can also check what our competitors are using, okay? So these are the keywords our competitor are using. And if we click on uh, product analytics in the Everbee, and then we go to the tags, we can see all the tags and the keywords that are working for this product. So fall flower seems to be a big one. Fall floral, okay, watercolor floral. Make sure that we wanna use these keywords in a title. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna copy a couple of those uh, words, okay? So I'm gonna put water flow, watercolor floral, and I'm gonna put sunflowers, because that's what they are, okay? Sunflowers. Let's see what are the other keywords that are worth um, attention. Fall flowers, okay, so we're gonna copy fall flowers as well. We're gonna paste it in the title. We're gonna copy the fall floral, okay? So we're gonna paste it as well. And remember, I'm also gonna put comma PNG because these are the PNG images. Um, let's see what else do we have. Sunflower clip art, I forgot about the word clip art. So maybe I'm gonna put the clip art right here, sunflowers clip art, okay? Um, let's see, um, what is our competitor using? Commercial instant download. Okay, commercial use, that's very important. People are looking for commercial use uh, um, digital files because they that means that they can buy them from you and reuse it for their own purposes. So make sure to use the commercial use as well. Uh, I think that's fine. I think we got most important ones so far, so we can stick to it. Okay, photos and videos. So this is where we're gonna upload the videos and the photos that we created in Canva. So I'm gonna click on app to 10 photos and the video. So my video and my photos are being added. Make sure that for the main video, you have the one that you think looks the best. In my opinion, it actually might be this one. I think this one might be the best one. So yeah, this is gonna be my number one, and this is the video, the video is being uploaded. All right, this looks good. We got a title, we got the image and the photos, description. So for the description, 
make sure to mention how big is the bundle. So if it's 20 images, say it's 20 images, make sure that you mention the commercial use so people feel free. Mention that you how what are the instructions so you're going to get the document with the link to the folder where you can download these images and also mention that they can message you whenever they have any questions okay okay let's get to the very important part the price okay when it comes to price i would just try to see what is your competitor doing okay so this guy is selling it for one dollar and 96 cents and how many does does this include it includes 18 images okay so he's very close to to us so you probably want to price it in similar price range okay so you probably want to price it for uh one dollar and 90 cents for example okay also check this out he's running a promo so he's actually selling it for three dollars and 27 cents and uh the final price is 196. you can do something similar promos are actually very effective so you can list it for let's say four dollars okay and then you're gonna run a promo let's say 60 percent off promo uh that way it's gonna look like this this is a great bargain and people are gonna buy it that's what we're gonna do we're gonna set up a promo in a second when it says quantity i just put the max whatever is the max that way i don't have to renew it every time you know uh someone purchased it from me when it says core details you want to make sure that it, that you're going to pick digital product you want to make sure that you're going to select uh you did this you made this product it's a finished product when did you make it we made it in 2023 and click on apply all right when this is category click on add category and what i usually do i just type in clip art because this is a clip art and then select clip art art images and files and click on done when it says craft type select the one you think fits uh, the category you can also select multiple if you want to so that's what we're going to do right here you can also select the color so I guess the major color here is uh, yellow. So I'm gonna select yellow. And you can also play with all these stuff right here, but we're gonna skip it. When it comes to tags, this is what I do with tags. I'm just gonna use the tags that this person is, is using. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna click on copy all from Everbee and just paste them right here. This is why Everbee is a useful tool because you can simply just copy these tags really fast, really smooth, okay? All right, what else do we have? Um, returns and exchanges. There's no return policy on digital products. You cannot return them. Renewal, you want to have it automatic. Feature listings. Do you want to feature this on your store or not? If this is your first uh, listing, you probably want to do and mark it as yes. And also, you, we need to actually upload the physical uh, product. And to do that, we're going to scroll up right here, digital files. So we're going to upload the document that contains the link remember what we did earlier we created a document that contains the link to my folder that's the document we're going to upload here it's a pdf file i named it etsy instructions so that's the folder i'm uploading i'm not uploading the images i'm uploading a document that contains the links to the images where they can download all the images at once because etsy has limits on how big the files can be uploaded okay so once you're done with all of that what you're going to do is you're going to click on publish you're going to click on publish again they're going to tell you they're going to charge you 20 cents and they're going to charge you every time you renew your images so this 20 cent charge is like a reoccurring charge every time you renew your listing and congrats you just listed your first listing and now all you have to do is just wait for money to kick in my friend let's cover the promotion okay so in this section we're going to talk about promotion and ads and i recommend running both at the same time because they're just going to boost your sales especially if you don't have any reviews you have very little listings ads and promos are a quick way to get your first sales and first reviews i'm going to show you how to do it so let's start with promos because they are really easy to set up and they don't cost you any money okay so to run a promo you're going to go to marketing and you're going to go to sales and discounts. All right. And right here you have these uh, three tabs. Uh, one that says waiting for eligible shoppers, remind shoppers to check out and turn favorites into orders. So I would set up all three of those because what they're going to do is they're going to send an emails to people that interact with your shop. For example, this one is going to send some message, a 30% off coupon to customers that has uh, interacted with you okay this one for example is going to set up another coupon to people that has uh, clicked uh, added the items to the cart but they abandoned it 
And these people, if they already interacted with you, that means that they have incentive to buy from you. They just maybe forgot, got distracted, or God knows what. So I recommend setting them up because that's basically free money coming to you. And uh, let's let's set up this one, for example. I'm on the card. I'm going to offer a 40% discount. And the code is going to be buy back, for example. Okay. On all my listings. I'm just going to uh, select it for all of one for all of them. And I know the discount is pretty big. It's 40%. But hey, these are digital products. I don't really, you know, ship them. I don't buy them. There's there's they're already made like there's, you know, I'm losing 40% off. Oh, my God. Well, big deal. Right. But like it's kind of money coming from nothing anyway. Feel free to adjust it. You can go lower. You can go higher. But these people are already dedicated to buy from me. So if I did if if I give them more motivation, hey, more money to me. And let's do this with the favorite one. So whenever someone clicks and favor your your item, they're gonna get an email. Let's say with the thirty percent off, and let's say the coupon is gonna be uh, favy. <laughs> uh, so uh, these people are gonna get an email from me with the thirty percent off again to motivate them and buy from me. So we just created three very easy promotions that are very effective, and that's the way to go, my friend. But let's create one more promo for let's say all my listings. And these promos are very effective. Okay, so we're gonna uh, run a sale this time. I'm gonna click on set up a sale, and we're gonna have a let's say 40% uh, off right on all of my listings. Let's just do all of them. Doesn't matter. And the promo is gonna start today, and it's gonna finish tomorrow. Okay, so it's gonna finish on the 25th. Uh, terms and conditions. It doesn't matter. Sales. Let's call it a spring day one okay and click on continue and i'm gonna select on all my listings review and confirm and voila i just created a promo the reason being why i selected this promo to last just one day it's because it's gonna create this clock on my listing that's gonna motivate people to buy it now because it's gonna say hey this promo expires in whatever 20 hours or something when people see that Back in the, their head, they're thinking, oh my God, I only have 20, 20 hours. I need to buy it now. Just come here every day and set up these short-term promos because they're very effective and work very great. And it's going to increase your sales significantly. Trust me, speaking from experience. Okay, so we covered the promos. Now, what about ads? So let's go ahead to ads right now. And I'm going to show you how to set it up. Okay. So uh, here's some motivational speech about ads, blah, blah, blah. We don't really care. I'm going to click on get started. And the ads I always run, I go with the drive orders short term. I just care about quick orders, quick money. Okay. So I'm going to click on submit and I'm going to spend $5. That's my whole budget per day. Okay. I run $5 budget on all my ads. So for example, the store I share on YouTube has 25 listings and all 25 listings are running on $5 a day, meaning I only paid $5. I don't spend $5 per each listing, just $5 period, okay? So if I run it for 30 days, five times 30 is what? It's $150 for the whole month. And trust me, it's worth it, especially if you have like, let's say 10 listings or more, it's worth it. Ads work great. So I'm gonna click on start advertising. And remember, even if it doesn't work for you, you can just turn them off. That's fine. You don't have to spend too much time in it. And that's it. You just leave it, leave it like that. And this is already working. Okay. Once you get more data on your ads, what I usually do is I come back and disable ads on listings that don't get a lot of attention from ads and just run it on the listings that are getting a lot of attention. That way I boost my best selling products and my least selling products. Hey, Maybe they just need a little bit more time to work it out, okay? But I prefer spend money on the things that are already working instead of the things that are not working right now. Maybe they will work in the future, but if they're not, I just focus on the money-making machines, not the not-making money machines, okay? <laughs> okay, so this is a bonus content on uh, exposing your images to like a broader audience, okay? So we talk about Etsy here and this whole instructional video was basically about Etsy, but there are other websites that you can also sell your digital products. 
And one of them is called Creative Fabrica. And this is something that I also list my designs on, okay? Creative Fabrica is basically something that people use specifically for print on demand. They just look for designs. There's no physical products on it. It's strictly images. That's it. And the cool thing about Creative Fabrica is that they all, they have a special section dedicated to AI art. So they are aware of it. They accept AI art and you can use them and you know, it's free. Like you don't pay anything for creating an account. The only thing is that you need to apply. So this is what the Creative Fabrica looks like. You're gonna have a link for it down below in the description of this video. And yeah, as you can see, people are selling stuff on Creative Fabrica uh, right here, okay? The way this kind of works is like, you need to subscribe. If, you, if you're purchasing this type of stuff, you need to subscribe and once you subscribe, you get like huge discounts. Like you can see some stuff over here, like a couple of cents, a uh, dollar or two. And when you subscribe, you get these uh, these uh, these images that you can buy from them. And you, as a seller, from from the other side, I under my understanding is like that you get a portion of their subscription. The the payment situation here is kind of complicated. I'm not hundred percent sure how it works. But I started listing my items on Creative Fabrica as well. So this is the dashboard. This is what it looks like. As you can see, I have $1.99 made on it. But I had eight followers, 19 favorites. So, hey, it's possible. It, you know, it, if you upload something to Etsy, might as well create, uh, upload it to Creative Fabrica because, hey, you know, it's $1.99 more in my pocket, okay? I'm not too big on Creative Fabrica, but I, ju I just started doing it right now. But as you can see, they have this tool right here, add new AI generated graphic, which will automatically categorize your uh, your uh, your listings into that AI uh, graphic category. And yeah, they, they're very AI friendly, I would say. So this is this is the, the platform. And again, you need to apply, they need to accept your store. You actually need to send them an Etsy store. So once you have an Etsy store, uh, you know, uh, getting some sales, uh, apply, and you might also expand your images and sell them on another platform such as Creative Fabrica because, hey, more eyes on your listings means more money and, you know, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't cost you anything. So why not? So that was it. This was kind of an intense session, huh? There was a lot of information we went through, but honestly, this is all you kind of need. This is what I do with my AI art. And, you know, I it's it's working for me. And I literally shared everything that I've done so far. That's it. That's that's the method, okay? There's no other secret. There's no, you know, other crazy stuff. If there is, I'm probably going to make an update video about it. But if you enjoy this, if you find any value in it, please, please like this video and also subscribe to my channel for more information about it. I also talk about dropshipping. That's a whole separate thing. Most people know me from the AI art stuff, but the reality is that I <laughs> mostly used to talk about dropshipping and now I talk about both stuff, AI and dropshipping, but dropshipping is my bread and butter. And I have a lot of different tools for dropshipping, such as the dropshipping course, such as the dropshipping supplier service that we provide. Uh, I also have a virtual assistant service. So all of these tools, you're going to have links for them down below in the description. A lot of them are free, so you don't have to spend any money. But I hope you enjoy this. I hope you know how to use the AI art now. You know how to sell them because that's the most comprehensive YouTube guide, I believe, there is out right now. I'm sure maybe in the future there's going to be more. But hey, at the moment, I'm the king now and I appreciate you watching this. And again, thank you for liking this video. Thank you for subscribing. All of that. Much love. I'll see you next time, my friend. Take care and good luck.